two, one, and we are, hold on. And hello, everyone, and welcome to IBM.TV Chess Stars with Sasha Starr. Hello, Sasha. Hello, Kim. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. And you know what? We had Walter Football intro for us. Is that a hoot? <laughs> okay, that's great. Oh, I love his music, right? It kind of gets us prepared for something great. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, how are you doing uh, there in Canada? Okay, we're doing okay so far. Is we're still dealing with this stupid coronavirus. Um, I, <laughs> I really hate it, uh, but it's still there. But I think we'll get it through. Hopefully, next month or two, things will start slowly get to normal. We in know the meantime, what yeah. In the meantime, it gives exactly. us. Sorry. Exactly. In the meantime, we don't have to be depressed, do we? Uh, no, no, there is no reason. No, there are so many that. interesting things going on that you hardly have time to follow everything what you'd like to do. And uh, since a uh, very, very significant part of uh, what I'm doing these days uh, is definitely involved chess. And uh, with um, my experience in chess, I was thinking to tell people something really, really interesting about chess. And one thing that occurred to me is that most people obviously uh, today, uh, especially because of the coronavirus, basically 99.99% of all chess activities now in online chess. Nobody is playing over the board except uh, me playing my wife. Every day we are playing at least 10 blitz games and we can still do it uh, in a real with real chess pieces and chess board. But other than that, the chess is online and there are some significant tournaments being held these days or so on. Uh, a lot of people simply just playing game after game and they're playing like uh, 10, 20, 55 games a day on different sites, like uh, it's chess.com or ours, chess24. There are a lot of uh, chess sites who are doing that. And uh, what I'd like to do is very different. I'd like to take historical perspective on chess and show you why this game, unlike anything else, creates a... Uh, an art form, a masterpieces, which are there for centuries and people enjoy watching these games. And um, it, it's just not result of the game what is significant, but the positions, the moves which were exhibited in those games. And uh, let me just give you a couple of examples. In the meantime, I will also show you a little bit about how our site operates. So. Maybe you can go sometimes and check uh, beautiful games even without uh, my help, but uh, I will be always around to help you if you need that. First of all, you can see there are some buttons, uh, buttons on the top of the board. Let's see, here is a play, a view, learn. Okay, if you are going to learn, and let's see, we'll go to famous players. I press famous players, and voila, we have still a chessboard here on the left side. And wait a sec, and now we have in alphabetical order all the strongest players of all time. There are quite a lot of them. And as you see on the very, now in the middle column, you see how many games we have in our database. And in the right column, you see their rating. Uh, of these players. And you see that we don't have anybody uh, with a rating below 2,500, which eliminates people like myself, obviously, so I'm not there. But that's okay. <laughs> I'll survive that indignity. So if you're going farther down the line, we can, we can find a lot of famous players. And we will go through a few games, but first let me show to some games that maybe 
Some of you have never seen in your life, although you do play chess. But um, the one of the strongest players of um, beginning of uh, 20th century was a player by the name Akiba Robinstein. He was uh, a Polish grandmaster. <laughs> he was uh, at his prime. He was one of the top three or four players in the world, and uh, he defeated uh, world champions such as Emanuel Lasker. And here is one game that he played uh, well over hundred years ago. In a year, uh, I believe it was 1907. Uh, yeah, it's actually 113 years ago, to be exact. Wow. And you will see what a beauty it is. I'll show it to you with my great pleasure. Um, so let me find first of all. See, I'm going to go in alphabetical order. And finally, I will get Rubinstein, which is right here. Akiba Rubinstein. And if I will go, um, that was his latest games. Actually, he died in in 1960s, but he was, um, unfortunately, he was a very ill man. He had some mental disorder. Actually, it was a story about him during one tournament. Um, he went for dinner in a restaurant in a hotel, and he ordered a lavish uh, four-course four dinner and ate it, enjoyed it, and then went for a walk and half an hour later he comes back to the same restaurants seats and orders exactly the same dinner and the waiter told him oh mr rubinstein you you just uh, had uh, this dinner just about half an hour ago he said really absolutely not it's not true i never had dinner actually i'm hungry would you please sir? well <laughs> uh, good had a pretty good uh, healthy appetite, I guess. <laughs> okay. So I, I don't know whether we should criticize his memory or just admit that he had a great appetite. I don't know which one is true. I like your 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 cup is half full theory, right? I think <laughs> yeah. it, and it could have been a twin. This is what I tell people: you never know. He might have a twin. So. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Okay. Okay. That's a good good thought to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here is the game um, as uh, Georg or George Salve, uh, who played white pieces, and um, Akiba Rubinstein, who played black pieces. And of course, mind you, I don't, I don't, I don't want to really tell you so much about his great contribution in uh, opening theory, because the uh, methods, the way he uh, played uh, openings, they're still valid today more than 100 years later. But that's uh, beside the point. It's not what I tried to show you. OK, you see, now I open the game. We are going to see the game. Just move by move. Now, on the right side, uh, you, you can actually ignore it altogether. However, if you'd like to take a look, you see the move, for example, e4. And we have uh, over 2,700,000. 180 games in our database with white winning 38.1%. Uh, 313 is a drone and black wins 30.6%. But okay, forget about all that. Let's just enjoy the game. So don't do anything. Just watch the board, watch the moves and see how the game develops. So far, it's very, uh, very usual opening. It's so-called Italian game. You see, it's almost symmetrical position. Everyone is developing its pieces. You see, now white was threatening to take an f7 pawn. And slowly, the game is rolling around. Everybody is doing its right moves. But now black starts a king-sized attack against white's king. White wants to do the same thing. He advances pawn, but so far, it's not doing much. So let's see, black decided to exchange queens. And there are still maneuvers, but now black slowly and slowly advances his pawn. Now he's exchanging. And I'm, am, am I too fast or not? 
No, you're doing just fine. I'm I'm well, just my 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 problem is my eyes are dry and I'm trying to watch really uh -oh, hard. Okay. So just bear with me, but I'm watching and listening. I'm learning. Uh no, no, that's okay. I'm just I'm just interested how the pieces are moving so we can follow. Can you see, see? what you see, you see, uh, as you see this position, it's still dead equal, but black has both his rooks on the D file and that um uh, lets us to believe that in fact black has significant advantage. He exchanged a pair of rook and another one is coming in. Right. Yeah, you see white is uh, fighting for his life, but unfortunately it doesn't work simply because now there is a huge advantage, two extra pounds and the black design. However, that's very Kind of a little bit dry positional game. Now I'll show you something a little bit sharper than this. So if you go back to back to games, and we'll try to show you another game. Now this time, oh. The same, the same opponent, same year, George Salva, but this game is way much sharper. Now you will see why very soon. So far, first few moves are about the same. Okay, as so you see this position, um, White advanced his king side's pawn, trying to, first of all, unpin its knight on f3. But at the same time, it created quite a few weaknesses, and you will see what's happened in a few moves here. You see Black advances his pawns in the center, and White is uh, actually fighting for his life. Now Black advances pawns even farther, now the queen comes, takes pawn, and now it's very dangerous position for white, and look how black solved this problem. Now he wants to bring his rook into attack. So I want to time out just a second. I think your screen's moving fine, but the screen that we're looking at hasn't moved, and I don't know why. So I know you're moving things, because, yep. but the screen that we're sharing, it didn't move. Oh, 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 I don't know why. So usually it moves just fine because you see me scrolling it. Sometimes we have technical difficulty, folks, but okay. I want to see what Sasha's doing. So let's take a look at what's happening. Sometimes we all learn technology here. Um, can you refresh your your chess stars screen? Hold on, I'm experimenting. Okay, let me refresh that. This is something that happens even to Nick when he's doing go to meetings. It, it oh, happens. So, okay. yeah, this happens. Mm -hmm. Well, we are living in a new world. We're OG, so, we are trying to get used to it all. Yeah, we're getting used to our new um, our new world. That's so, right. what, what, uh, what do you see now? I don't see a chessboard. Share there. screen again. Oh, really? Okay. Well, really, all you should have had to do was refresh the screen you were playing on. I just mm -hmm. wanted to, but, but let's do this. Let's see if this fixed the problem. Okay, so I should have pressed Chrome tab, yeah? And then well, now, I'm just, tab. now just share screen again. Okay. There so we what? go. Here, I got you. So, oh, good. There we, okay, we have exactly there we position. are. We're, we're exactly where you say we were. Okay. Mm. Oh, okay. So let's see the, the finish of this game. So you see this arrow, the blue arrow. Mm -hmm. uh, the pawn moved and attacks the rook. So what to do? Uh, white uh, stops pawn. And now, now the, another rook is hanging. Now queen is threatening to take the rook. So white is playing this. And if black takes rooks, then white will take black's rook, okay? But it's not going to happen. 
it, he simply goes to another line. And now look at this. Queen check. Look at this move. Now white can take queen for nothing, which he must do anyway. There are no other move. But now <coughs> this is a discovered check. The, uh, the bishop on e4 right there is now attacking king by blacks moving the pawn ahead. F3 pawn moves to F2, and now you see. Like me. Well, he must take. However, now he promotes, he takes rook, black pawn, and promotes itself into queen and takes rook. You see what's happened? The, white, the black yes. took almost all pieces in two moves. Wow. And <laughs> that's a very spectacular end of the game. So the game is over. Okay. Why uh, over? Explain why the game is over. Uh, the game is over for, for, for one simple reason. Uh, let's count the pieces. Black has a queen and two rooks. Now, white, on the other hand, has only queen and one knight. So if you know the value of the chess pieces, the rook is approximately five points. Okay. So if black has two rooks and white has none, so black has 10 points, 5 plus 5, and knight is equal about 3 points. So now 10 points versus 3 points. That's uh, uh, in chess, it's a fantastic advantage. So, yeah, no, this is um, very interesting uh, because I didn't understand the points. So. Yeah. So and you know how many points is queen? Hmm. It's a, it's a debatable, but uh, it's either nine or ten. You see, some people believe that it's nine points because uh, uh, it's equal to about three light pieces, like nine bishops. Uh, knight and bishops are worth three points each. But there is another system that uh, each of these uh, light pieces, knight and bishops, are worth three and a half points. So if there's three and a half points, then uh, it's worth, queen is worth about 10 points, which is equal to two rooks. And uh, that makes a lot of sense. I I would prefer actually that system, but, but you know what, people are still debating. There is also some other consideration because, for example, in some open positions, for example, um, bishops are stronger than knights. Rooks are stronger than both knights and bishops. Queens are very strong in open position, not that much in uh, close position. Knights are very powerful in close position. So it also depends on the position. We want to may put exactly the value, but just uh, to have at least some orientation, what's the value of the piece? This is um, a pawn is worth one, one point. The knight and bishop are either three or three and a half, doesn't matter that much. Rooks are five and queen are, say, ten. That's probably the wow. easiest thing to, to deal with. So does it does it the points? Is there a place where it does the points for you? Uh, a place what? So does it show me somewhere on, on your, your site? Does it show how many points? Well, I guess you can you can find it probably <laughs> elsewhere, but you do, you don't have to be you to, yourself to memorize it because it's it's a very um, in a way it's somewhat artificial uh, table with points. It just helps you to have at least basic valuation if you trade, for example, a knight for a pawn, and you know a knight is worth say three three and a half points, and pawn is only one point. Why would you trade your knight for a pawn? You would never do that. Right. right. Just, just for this, for comparison purposes, that's uh, that's where it becomes valuable. Okay. Um, now I want to show you something. Uh, okay, we are looking at uh, Robinstein's game. So maybe I'll show you just one more. Also very beautiful game. Now, was it played also in 1907, I believe? Um, I think so, yes, just to find it. That's really, really. I'm looking at these games, I'm, I'm impressed that these games were 
ever played, and never mind 100 years ago. Let's share a little bit about this. Um, the people are able to go back and look at old games between two, two great chess players, and you can select these games and play them. Like you can sit back and just let the board play itself. And yeah, it's absolutely. So cool. It is like watching TV, but a lot more mm. fun. And like Dr. Art taught us today, you know, TV, all those commercials are brainwashing us to eat junk food. We could be doing something like this, having a lot of fun and let, watch two other people play. That's yeah, absolutely. Now, here is another game also played uh, by Rubenstein, also in 1907. Wow. A uh, player by the name Rod Levy. Now, that game is obviously one of the most beautiful games in history. Now, tell me, do you see the moves? And what's cool is we're, we're playing games that were played over 100 years ago. That's what's yeah. cool. Wow, this is like over 100 years ago, this game was played and we get to watch it. This is cool. Uh, now, am I, are, you, are you following my moves? Yes. Excellent, excellent. Okay, it's one of the most popular openings um, that were all displayed like this. So white seems to me a little bit more active. He advanced his pawn on a queen side, but watch what happens in a game. Black is using centralized strategy. And in fact, I think black is already better at this point. Wow. You see, his bishops are dangerously looking uh, toward the white king. And you will see what's happened in a few moves. Check. Okay. So white has to move king. And now knight jumps. So he's trying to cover the long diagonal with his bishop. But black advances now his queen. And there is a threat of a checkmate on this pawn, right? If queen will take pawn, knight protects it, and it's a checkmate. So he has to play this, and now white queen protects this h pawn, okay? And all of a sudden, wow, what's happening here? White now can take the queen, really? And white does exactly that. So black makes this move. Oh my God, now queen can take rook. But it's a, it's a extremely strong move because if queen takes rook, then bishop takes white bishop here and it's checkmate. A couple of moves. So uh, white still has to take check. He must cover his king with the queen. So supposedly black can take queen back, but that's not enough. Now comes the killer move. Now rook goes on this pawn. Queen cannot take rook, as you see, because of the pin from the bishop. Bishop attacks queen and a king, so queen cannot move. On the other hand, there's a threat uh, that uh, black will take h pawn. And that would be a checkmate because queen cannot take because of the pin and bishop here attacks this black square. So what to do? Resign. What a beauty. What a black sacrificed the queen in order to bring all his pieces into attack. And although it's white's move, and white has a queen and two rooks. So the, if you count material in this position, you'll see that white has incredible advantage but there is no defense against checkmate okay yeah that's what makes this game one of the most beautiful games in history of chess because of the uh, material imbalance heavily in in white's favor but it doesn't help me doesn't help him to defend from a checkmate right so this is one of the uh, most beautiful games in the history of chess um now, there's something else I'd like to show you. Mm -hmm. It's one of the games, uh, it's a, probably the most famous games. Rook takes here, and it's a chair. Oh, no, no. Uh, I have one listener asking me some questions. 
Okay, so uh, if you will go to uh, players, and I'll find nobody else but Robert Fisher. Robert Fisher is an uh, American phenomenon. Uh, he finally became world champion in uh, 1972 by beating Russian Boris Spassky. It was a so-called match of the century. However, um, he was famous uh, already several years before that. And uh, as a matter of fact, he became famous uh, for f first his claim to fame was when he was 13 years old in 1956. He was playing in a U United States uh, chess championship. And where he played his masterpiece, there were famous um, chess players. One of them was international master and another grand master with the name Robert and Donald Byrne. And um, Fisher played one masterpiece against Donald Byrne in 1956, where he was 13 years old. That's absolutely incredible game, which you're going to see right and what now. Year was this? Sorry? What year was this? 1956. All right. Yeah, it seems now like like 500 years ago, but uh, time flies very fast. I I'm trying to imagine New York in 1956. It was probably quite an interesting uh, place. And uh, Robert Fisher moved. Um, uh, he was born in Chicago, and uh, moved with his mother and. Um, uh, older sister, they moved to New York, to Brooklyn, and he studied with a very famous coach. Uh, do, you know, do you call um, the chess uh, instructors coaches? Are there different stages and levels for you that are teaching? Uh, yeah, I, I would say this. Um, there are trainers, there are coaches, there are instructors, there are teachers. You can call them, uh, you see, most of them are teaching chess in schools, for example, and trying just to, uh, to explain how the game is being played so people could learn, enjoy the game. But there are coaches who are instructors on higher levels. They're coaching uh, grandmasters or... Uh, international masters who are on their way to become grand masters. So, so it's a different purposes. One is just to publicize the game and make uh, people really enjoy the game. Some others are uh, just to um, make them into international stars. Okay, here's a game with the name Byrne and Fisher, and here's how it goes. Now, it's a modern way to Play the opening. Fisher is playing black pieces, and what the way he's playing, it's an old Indian defense or King's Indian defense. However, after this move, it becomes Grunfeld defense. Wow. So far, it's all opening series. Just, uh, just see, enjoy the game. And as you see, um, what has um, a special advantage and uh, his. Queen is very aggressively placed. However, look at next couple of moves. Okay. All of a sudden, knight a4. What kind of move is that? Because essentially, knight can take black's knight, and Donald Byrne is not doing that. Because then knight would take pawn on e4, and there would be a lot of complications. So the game continues like this. And now white uh, is losing a very important pawn on e4. And uh, um, although white thought that he would have a counterplay by developing bishops. Well, black is very cool. He's taking a pawn and a check. Okay. And he defended. However, white can take queen. And he does that. Now what to do? There is a check. One more check. Another check. And white 
doesn't have any other moves except uh, just moving his king back and forth. So if, uh, for example, in tournament, all what black wanted is to have a draw, so he has a draw by perpetual check simply by moving his knight back and forth. But in this position, black wants a little bit more than a draw, especially that white is up a queen. So how Fisher is going to do that? Okay, one more check. And now he takes bishop, white has a queen. However, black has a very strong attack. Also, he is very well developed. And now you can see what's happening. Now there is a total attack against queen. All pieces are protected. White has nothing better to do than just take a pawn. And now black takes rook. So black already has a very, very strong compensation uh, for his queen, actually even more than that. So white is trying to hide his uh, king, but it doesn't help really. Now, uh, look how many pieces uh, black has. He has a rook, he has uh, two bishops, and he has a knight. And white has only one knight and one queen. So, and never mind three extra pounds at the black. <laughs> <laughs> so it's complete wipe out. Oh, wow. And uh, black wins this game easily by playing check. Another check, and um, he just runs his king to, <laughs> to a checkmate. Until he can't move any further. No, it's coming right here. Okay, look at here. Here is a checkmate now. Rook attacks king, and it's protected by bishop, and there is nowhere to go with the king. You see? I do. This is considered to be one of the uh, top Grandmaster's game to the 20th century. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That, that, and look how strategically it was played. Um, when you thought one was going to lose, it, they came back. So, I mean, it was a beautiful game. It's like dancing on the board, right? <laughs> dancing with <laughs> yeah, the stars. Right. Right? We're dancing with the stars. Um, but each game is a different move. It's, it's, you shared this uh, story yesterday with us as well that it's, it, each time is different but you know you can start out the same but it it is different yeah the beauty of chess games is that um you see if you look at the uh, beginning position you can see that white can start start game with uh, 20 different moves mm -hmm. there are eight pounds each pound can move one square at a time or two squares at a time so you have 16 different moves by pound and each knight has two opening moves, so it's 20. So if you have 20 moves for white, and then you obviously have 20 opening moves for black. So if you multiply 20 by 20, you will see 400 different moves, different positions after only one move. So if you will go farther and farther, you will <laughs> you go into astronomically huge numbers. Like, <laughs> I, I don't want to even name it. I don't want to scare anybody. It's not my purpose to be in here. But trust me, it's uh, it's been calculated there are more chess moves than atoms in the universe. So uh, see, the numbers are so huge that you, you, you can't even comprehend them. It's well beyond a human brain to understand that. That's why I really believe in theories that chess was brought to us from another planet, from another civilization. I can't believe that human beings could, could invent such a game. I just, I just refuse. I, I agree with you. I think there's so many things on our earth that are unexplainable for mankind to have been able to engineer, like the pyramids and uh, just so many other things. Um, look at some of the things that occurred in science. It's just very difficult for me to believe that we evolved some of these things just on our own. So I think chess is one of those games. I mean, I just, I, you know, and how somebody came up with each of the, the chess pieces to move a certain way. Like a horse has got to go two step and one, two step and one. You know what that is? That's a dance. 
<laughs> he had however, however, uh, knights, the only point. pieces in chess that can jump over other pieces. No <laughs> other figure can do that, only knight. Only the horse. Yeah, only the horse, <laughs> exactly, because horse uh, jumps. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the, the, to me, the knight is, uh, a lot of people, they have their favorite pieces. And when I interview ch uh, chess people, I'm, I'm sure they all get asked that, what's your favorite chess piece? And to me, I pick the knight for, for many reasons. Um, one, because I feel like that they're the ones that, that work and serve the most in in the court. I mean, that's their purpose, right? And it was a horse. Yeah, I, I grew up <laughs> loving horses. And um, so, of course, but what's your favorite piece, Sasha? Um, I would say queen. The queen. Queen is the most powerful piece. It's powerful. You know, this yeah. is what kills me. The king should be the most powerful. Nah. <laughs> yeah, but you see, uh, in chess, for some reason, king moves only one square at a time in all directions, but queen moves unlimited squares of, of the down right. in each position. So a king being in the center of the board, let's see on the square, it can move to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight squares around himself, eight. Queen being in the same square, if the board is empty, it can go one, two, three, four squares, one, two, three, seven, uh, one, two, three, four, it's 11, one, two, three, 14 squares. And then it can move as a rook, three and four, seven, three and four, another seven. So it's um, 14 and um, uh, 14, <laughs> 27 squares. Well, that's how, that's, so the queen is probably four times as powerful as a king. If you add that up, and you know what I say is, is you just can't keep a woman still. That's the reason why she was made the most powerful. They had to make it realistic. <laughs> yeah. But you see, <laughs> they, they, they became realistic. <laughs> but it creates a little bit in imbalance in, in chess that, unlike in life, a uh, queen can run away from king, but king cannot run away from queen because uh -huh. queen is much stronger and much faster. And uh, <laughs> so that's why the queen is so much powerful. And actually, queen can checkmate the enemy king. And king cannot checkmate enemy's king. Right. The king can't do that at all, can no. it? No. That's the only piece. That even pawn can checkmate the king, but it, not king. Interesting in many ways that you, you make these pieces the way they are. And mm -hmm. if you really look at a true um, royalty panel, right, the true monarchy, the true um, royalty it's kind of similar, right? You got the knight that does all the work. The bishop does his job. They kind of move in certain ways. Um, but the king really has to stand in one place and just tell everybody and wait for everybody to wait on him. And that's pretty much what chess is, right? Yeah, yeah. So the, 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 really chess is, uh, if to believe that Indians uh, invented chess about 2,000 years ago. So it's basically, it started as a war game because if you look at the pieces, the bishop, they had uh, the bishops uh, in their armies, the elephants, right? They had mm -hmm. knights, uh, yep. had, um, uh, their chariots power powered by knights. They had uh, obviously pounds for soldiers, foot soldiers. And so on. So essentially, it started as a war game, and uh, then it uh, went through Iranians, through Arabs. It migrated to Europe. It was very popular at the uh, 12th, 13th centuries in uh, Spain and Italy, and in about 15th century, 16th century, it adopted all the um, uh, modern rules. So chess, as it's played today, played without any changes of rules for the last 500 years. Approximately. Wow. Yeah. Also, the, what's interesting about chess, it's a universal game. It's been played in uh, all countries around the world. And the chess Olympiads are the most uh, popular, with the exception of world uh, soccer championship. Only world soccer championship has more teams participating on uh, various uh, levels than uh, chess. Chess is number two after soccer. 
and uh, obviously all nationalities so people speaking all languages uh, all religions all races all nationalities just name it all ages all genres uh, men women children uh, white people, not so white people, doesn't really matter. Everybody Race, says, color, culture, it doesn't matter. Anybody can sit down and move a piece. And, and you know what? I, I witnessed this with one of our chess masters that comes on our show every once in a while. Elliot Neff has a lot of beautiful children. And of course, each of his children learn. And he's got some very, very like toddlers, right? That can crawl. So one of the things I love about chess is the ethics that you teach, the friendship, the, the even though you're competing against each other at a very high mental capacity, you always shake hands. Right now we don't do that, but there's always this uh, respect for each other. Right? Absolutely. And, so, and even if you consider yeah. that chess is being played online these days a lot. So even first of all, you have to learn how to operate computer. You have to learn how to move pieces. You have to understand notation. Let's see this game. On the bottom, you see this notation, what moves were played, how many moves, and so on. So you already have to be uh, at least uh, literate, including computer literate, to even, even just play the game. So a lot of people uh, who are learning how to play chess, they're doing very well in other uh, disciplines like mathematics, like uh, uh, different uh, subjects like uh, physics, uh, chemistry, many others. And as, as I told you earlier today, uh, in 1990s, the Bankers Trust hired a lot of uh, chess grandmasters to do a bond and stock trading, and uh, <laughs> they all did very well. Yeah, no, I mean, that's what I find interesting is the um, the mentality of people who play chess. They're always thinking strategically um, everything they do because all the people I've met in my career, um, I've been just so truly intrigued with those who play chess. And in the last four years working with Nicholas Palaveda, I've had the pleasure of interviewing some of these fabulous successful people and i looked at the common denominator of all of them and they play chess i'm like sure wow okay you know what for uh before we close um our show we can play Isn't one game time? No, no, no. <laughs> no we just got started sasha i know it's not time to close the show no <laughs> well, I just thought uh, if we could. We'll do it again. next week, I guess. But I'm, I didn't even realize it was time. I'm, I'm sitting here. Um, somebody was asking me. They said I can't find your link. I want to watch your show, and and so I was kind of helping somebody find the link while we were talking. Um, I'm what ignoring you, but somebody was trying to find your sh our show. I think it's time. It's time. To time. <laughs> to fight coronavirus. We need Corona. Are you saying it's time to lock down? Yeah. We're not going to wrap up. We're going to lock down. It's Corona yeah. time, folks. You know, Sasha, this has okay. been very enlightening. What I've en I enjoy every visit with you. And oh, um, so I you. guess I'll, I'll, I I would call you sensei. You know, because that's just respectful in in my world. I worked with the Japanese for years. You are a sensei. You are a master at um, this game. I think one of the things I like about this is that we're going to learn together the good and bad out there, right? Because there's good and bad yeah. and everything. But um, how many times in your lifetime do you get to sit down and watch a game that was played 100 years ago? Uh, I don't. Not, not very often. First of all, this technology, technology was never available until recently. So if you wanted to look at the game, it would never play it by itself. You had to first of all find the book where the game is. Then you have to have a board in front of you. So you have to look at the book, move the piece. Then you have to evaluate position and think about really what's happening or so on. So it's only last couple of years that technology became available. And I'm very proud that it's available on our site and you can uh, you can just go there, find the game, find your favorite player, and just replay it. And the game will just play it by itself, and you will just see it with a maybe with a beer or cigar or something else, and just enjoy it. Well, and here's <laughs> you're showing us how to do this on your website. You don't have to wait for Sasha and I to get together on Saturdays to have a Corona and talk about it. 
you can go do it yourself anytime. And yeah, then, sure. I'll show sure. you more right. games. I'll show you how to operate the site. That's and right. uh, essentially, we will have a contest, uh, which we will um, prepare technologically, so it will be right on. And uh, that's where the wheels are. But I don't want to take uh, today a lot into this. No, no, no. We will talk next next Saturday. We'll talk more about. But it. but here's something interesting. A lot of people don't know is you know chess is quite a love story in your life, and we'll share that next week. Next week for sure. <laughs> yep. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us on Chess Stars. Uh, don't be bored or alone sitting at home during COVID-19 where um, you can actually get out here and exercise your brain. And as I have learned, you can burn thousands of calories while you play a game of chess. But more important, just oh, go to you chess. Just it. You hit it right. This is why Akiba Rubinstein went second uh, for second time dinner. There because, you go. because he burned his 6,000 calories. I, hungry. I solved it. Okay, you got it. Solve the historical problem. See, yes, we got it right this time. After all of these hundreds of years, we now know the truth. He burned all of those calories. And folks, right. thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next week on ChessStars.com at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to Sasha. Um, he's always available or join us on IBM.TV during the weekdays when we're uh, doing the TV show and, and text Sasha. He's there every day. Have a great